This tutorial walks you through how to make a map with realistic looking terrain from an image of an object in the night sky. The concept of this technique is to use pictures of astronomical objects as grayscale height maps where areas of low elevation are darker while areas of high elevation are brighter. This method is an adaptation of the Arion tutorial by Arshish, linked below. To follow this tutorial, you'll need four things in addition to your computer, all of which are free and publicly available for download through the links provided. First, you'll need GIMP, a free, open source image editor. Photoshop should also work, though you'll have to work your own way through the necessary commands. Second, you'll need Wilbur, a free terrain editing program. Third, you'll need some color gradients. I recommend you take the same ones that are in the link below for the Arion tutorial. It's on the Cartographer's Guild website. If you look just below the tutorial, right down here, land height gradients, that's what you need to download. And finally, you'll need an image to start with. You can pick your own picture and follow along to create a unique map. This should be a cloudy object in outer space, like a nebula, a galaxy, a quasar. What's important is that the image should be sharp, with some interesting shapes and textures, and pixel dimensions somewhere between 1,000 to 3,000 per side. Alternately, you can start with the same image I have linked below, right here on the screen, and follow along. Let's get started. Copy the image you want to use. In this case, I've chosen a nebula. Open up GIMP and paste in your image. Go over under the layers and gradients over there on the right, right click your pasted layer and duplicate it. Double click the name and we will rename this desaturated. Now desaturate that top layer. Any desaturation method will do. Click on your select by color tool and set the threshold to about 50. Click on a very dark area of the image. The result should be a lot of dark selected areas with a bit of a fuzzy region around the center. In order to resolve the fuzzy regions, we'll feather the selection. Feathering by five or fewer points should produce a pretty jagged coast with lots of tiny islands in that fuzzy region. Feathering by more than 25 points should produce a very smooth coast. I'm going to use about 15 for this map. Feathering also makes the edges of the selection a bit fuzzy. Since we want a distinct coast, we'll sharpen the selection. Now we create a new white layer. We'll call it water. Use the bucket tool with black and make sure that the fill whole selection tool option is checked. Fill the selection. Now select none and change the mode of the water layer to multiply. This is our initial height map, but we'll do a bit of refining before we move on. Photos of space tend to be bumpy from tiny individual stars. We'll smooth that out now. Select the desaturated layer, and now apply a despeckle filter two or three times with the default settings. A few big bright stars will remain, and that's fine. I also personally don't care for these little star islands out here by themselves, so I'm going to click on the water layer, use the pencil tool, and you might want to use a harder brush than that soft one there. And I already have black selected, so I'll just paint right over those. 
make them go away. Looks pretty good. Now right click the desaturated layer and create a new transparent layer. We'll call it Sculpt. Select the Airbrush tool. You're going to want a soft brush here. And we'll set the opacity to 10%. Now for this image, I'll set the size to 100 pixels. The idea here is to reduce or eliminate basins or low areas that are surrounded by high areas because our terrain sculpting software, Wilbur, is going to fill those in and make them very flat. If you have any lakes inside your land masses, I suggest raising most of the lands around them while leaving a bit of a low channel, like a river valley, for them to escape. This will allow the lakes to drain naturally and not build up a large flat, like a salt flat, around the lake. So we're going to go ahead and start sculpting here. I'll start with this big lake. And this is just holding down the mouse button. And because I have the opacity to 10%, it'll only raise it a little bit at a time. So once I've done one pass, I have to go ahead and start the next. So you have to you can't just hold down the mouse button and keep going the whole time. There's quite a bit you can do with land sculpting. What I'm doing for the most part is just raising the terrain, but you can also lower it. You can predefine river valleys, even though the erosion program, Wilbur, will eventually cut its own river valleys. You can shoehorn those rivers in exactly where you want them. And that can be useful if you want to create a map with rivers going exactly where you want them. Since these astronomy-based maps tend to already have a lot of really good texture built into them, I want to retain as much of that as I can, so I don't like doing too much land sculpting with these. Now I'm going to go ahead and make myself a little river valley with that sculpt. So I just changed my color to black, and I'm going to just drain away this big lake right here. I'm going to darken that just a little bit, so it feed into that tiny lake down there. That looks pretty good. We'll find out when we run it through Wilbur. Now it's time to take this height map and add in some erosion effects. So first, right-click the top layer and create a new layer from visible. And we're going to export this image to a PNG file. I will call it Wilbur Input PNG and export. So now we'll open Wilbur. And the next few steps are straight out of the Arion tutorial by Arshish that I mentioned earlier. First thing we do is we open up the PNG file that we just created. Wilbur input. Great. We'll move over to an interesting area on the map, because uh, usually the top left isn't all that interesting. Uh, we'll look at this big lake right here. And the first thing we do is go to Filter, Mathematical, and Span. The low set it to 500, and the high will set to 3500. Okay. Next thing we do is we create noise. Filter, noise, percentage noise. Now for this map, I'm doing about 2%. If you've got a smaller map, you might want to go as high as 5. If you're going really, really big, you might even consider cutting it to 1, but that's only for making a huge map. 2% is for a pretty big image file. Next, we're going to go up to Filter, Erosion, and Precipitation Based. And keep all the settings about what they are, except change the passes from 1 to 2. Hit OK, and watch Wilbur do its magic. This will do some erosion effects, mostly focused around the edges. You'll start seeing these little tiny coastal streams and rivers coming in all the way along the coast. You see it along the lake, too. It's kind of neat. Now we'll add some more noise. The nice thing about it is it keeps the random seed and it keeps the percentage right there. We'll go ahead and add that. Okay. 
Next thing we do is what I hinted at earlier. We're going to be filling the basins. Fill, fill basins, keep the default settings. And what this does is it fills in all the low areas inside the land masses. We'll still have our lakes defined in the GIMP image, and you'll see that when we go back into it. But this allows Wilbur's incise flow, which we're going to use here uh, in just a few minutes, to cut rivers that'll go ahead and drain naturally down to the sea, just as they do here on planet Earth. So there we see we have a whole bunch of different flat areas. And we're going to add a little bit more noise here. But because we don't want the noise to stack up where we've already created noise and create a kind of gritty, bumpy texture to the map, what we're going to do is select from terrain flat areas. Okay. And now we're going to add noise just to that selected area. Filter, noise, percentage, watch it go. Excellent. And now we will select and deselect what we had. We've got a nice noisy bit there. We're going to fill the basins one more time. Filter, fill, fill basins. Now incise flow takes longer than just about any other command you'll put into Wilbur. Uh, depending on the size of your map and how powerful your machine is, it can take several minutes. I've had it take as long as 20 on a long one here. So I'm going to skip over how long it takes just to get the menu to come up. But uh, filter, erosion, uh, incise flow, that's what we're going for. And I'll cut out here and cut back in just a second. Okay, here is the Wilbur incise flow process menu. We're going to change the amount to 2. And the flow exponent, I have 0.65 most of the time. We'll go ahead and hit the preview. Okay, you can move that around a little bit. And if you look, right there is the big lake that I talked about earlier. And you can see my terrain sculpting has made that river drain away to the north along that river valley that I defined earlier. So that looks pretty good. We'll hit OK. Now we'll switch to texture, gray maps, height map. Okay, now this is the image that you're going to see. Uh, exported from Wilbur and going back into GIMP. Uh, so we'll go to File, Save As. You can save as a huge range of different things here. What we're going for is PNG Texture. And we'll call this Wilbur Output. PNG and save. All right, so now we're going to go back over to GIMP. We'll go to File, Open as Layers, and Wilbur Output right there. At first glance, it doesn't look like there's a huge difference. But if you hold down Control and roll your mouse wheel forward, you'll see there are a bunch of little rivers there. We'll make just about all of our terrain features stand out now by doing some bump mapping. We're going to create a new layer and we're going to call it land bumps. Next, go over to the color and this is black. We're going to raise this from 0 up to 50. Nice neutral gray. Now select your bucket tool and fill land bumps completely with gray. It obscures everything else. That's fine go up to filters, map, and bump map. Now for the settings you want your elevation at about 30 and you want your depth at 30 as well. In this case we're going to use the Wilbur output. Looks a little bit weird because Wilbur's rivers defined all of this ocean area as flat land. We're about to get rid of all that. First, we're going to change the mode of this land bumps layer to overlay. That already takes care of some of it. We're also going to move the water layer up to the top. So now we're going to go over and right click our Wilbur output layer and duplicate it. And we'll go ahead and rename this layer climate. 
This is where you use color gradients. They should be here under your gradients tab, and you should have something that looks like this. Your climate layer selected, colors, map, and gradient map. Now for me, this produces a land color texture that's a bit too green. So I'm going to lower the opacity of my climate layer down to about 50%. And just looking at this, my land bumps layer does look a little bumpy. I'll lower the opacity for that layer down to about 70% uh, or so. That's pretty good. All right, last step. Click on the water layer. Change its mode to normal. Hit your select by color tool. Click on the white. Hit delete. Now you need to invert your selection. We need a color for our water. So we want a nice dark blue. Then we select our bucket tool, click on the black, and it becomes a nice blue ocean color. Hit select and none. One final note. You may notice if you zoom in that some of these rivers they kind of skirt the edges of the lakes that you had predefined. That's just a result of Wilbur's filling in some of the basins the way that it did and then cutting along the edges of them with incise flow. Select your pencil tool. You're going to want to have your brush be a hard brush again. And you want to adjust the size of your brush down to about 10 now. And here we just expand our lake a little bit just to eliminate some of those little pesky rivers that skirt along the shores of the lake. It's not terribly realistic, and this makes it much, much more so. At this point, though, that's something that people are only going to notice if they look very, very closely at your map. What you have right now is a very good baseline that you can work to expand, to improve, however you see fit. So that's the end of this tutorial. If you like what you create, I invite you to comment and share links to your creations. Enjoy making your maps. God bless.